Okay, this morning I'm looking at the latest estate sale haul. Uh, this all came from the tool room of a very old historic home in a town not far from here uh, on the National Historic Register. This place was kind of like, you know, one of those houses where you can pay and get a tour and all of that stuff. The Park Service owns them and all of that. You could look at all the stuff people used to have and go, ooh, ah, but you really can't touch any of it. Well, in this case, it was kind of like that, but you were allowed to touch everything and buy whatever you wanted, just not the house itself. And uh, I think this tool room had pretty much been unused since the 1960s and dated all the way back to 1904. And there was a lot of stuff in there, and me and about 400 other guys were picking like crazy. I was basically, at one point, literally dumping entire drawers of stuff right into my bags to pick out what I wanted later because I knew... I knew the guy running the sale, and I knew it wasn't going to be a great deal of money for any of it. But we have some interesting things here. Well, to start with, everybody knows you can never have too many clamps. Well, this house had a fully equipped wood shop, and there were all kinds of clamps. Big ones and small ones. The small ones are useful to me in my phonograph restorations. So there we go. We got all kinds of clamps. They're all ancient, 60s on down. Some of this stuff from the 40s and 30s maybe earlier. And then there were all the smalls, as you can see right here. Anybody ever see something like that? That is a 1920s multi-tool. 20s or early 30s, maybe. See, it's got a little drill chuck up there. You turn this to loosen the chalk and put these little bits in it. And they all appear to be there. That's the thing about this house. This was a mansion. People had a lot of money and sometimes I guess they bought things, just didn't use them. That does not look used at all inside there. I think they just bought that, or were given it as a gift, and they just stuck it in a drawer down in the tool room, and that's where it stayed until I found it and pulled it out. Next to it was this. This is the original cigarette lighter, or lighter, not necessarily just for cigarettes. Uh, I am company in Austria, made... Beginning in 1908, and they made this style right up through the 1920s. This is probably one from the 20s. Uh, you, know, you fire it up just by, let's see. There you go. Still works. Of course, I had to charge it with fluid. It didn't come with fluid in it, but it, it works perfectly. Again, I don't think it was really used at all. And these actually are rather expensive for lesser versions of this on eBay. So I did pretty good with that one. I thought when I first saw it, I only saw that. I, I thought it was a tube of lipstick and I was going to ignore it. And I said, you know what? In this house, you don't ignore stuff. This is an early multi-tool like that, except different. This has a knife handle and you attach all these things to it. The knife handle is not here. The friend of mine that I was with thinks it's in his stuff that he was throwing stuff in boxes too. So we'll check that out later and see. If not, I can probably acquire a handle eventually on eBay or something from a partial kit. Some of the stuff is missing. This is a couple of larger tools that might go in here. I'm not really sure. This company made uh, a variety of different kits and different sizes. Something like this was probably carried on a bicycle or a motorcycle or something like that. But you don't see stuff like that too often. All right, now this. This is a socket set from the Keystone Company. It's complete. Nice bit of Art Deco tool design there. Look at that. All the sockets are there. None of them appear to be used. This was probably bought, used for some project one time, and then put down there in that, that tool room. There were not a lot of automotive tools in that tool room. It was primarily woodworking of one type or another, or basic household tools. I found that, and I also found... Uh, oddly enough, a 60s era snap-on screwdriver down there. Just one. This is actually on the floor. You can tell it's kind of rusty. So I imagine they must have acquired this somewhere or somebody left it behind from some project. That's okay. That's guaranteed forever. Snap-on. You break that tip, you take this back to the truck to put a new blade on it for you. Oil cans. You can never have too many oil cans. These are Eagles, of course. This is a 40s era, or maybe 50s. Three and one, unfortunately, it was on the floor and kind of rusted a bit, but still, not in bad shape. Now this, 
is a tie into my phonograph collecting. Brunswick Bulk Colander Company, Chicago, Illinois. This is some kind of Q-tip glue. It's all dried up now. Uh, I don't know what that would have been used for. I guess you stuck the Q-tip in the top to get the glue. I don't know. But I will put that with my phonograph collectibles. I do not have a Brunswick, but who knows? I might one day. Most of my stuff is Victrola. And it comes in its original little cardboard tube. Most of the time, that stuff is thrown away. And it was still there. We have some pipe care get, get over here, gear. That's for taking care of wood briar pipes and this. Well, who knows what this is for? This is for scraping out the, the, uh, the built up char in a briar bowl of, of uh, appropriate size there. This one is made by Dunhill. That's made by Dunhill. You'll be able to see it more once I clean it up. But... Everybody knows what these are, more clamps. These spring clamps are still made today, all oh, in China now. These are really nicely made, heavy duty. Who made this? Uh, this is a Hargrave number two. And are they all Hargraves? I think they might be. Uh, yeah, apparently they are. Okay, that figures. We have an old, old soldering iron there. That's a big one. That probably dates back to Holmes' uh, early days in 04 to 14, maybe 1920s. A wrench, no name on it. No name wrench, you get those. Okay. The Yankee Tool Company. These are North Brothers Yankees. You can see we have an older one here. This is a newer one. It's chrome plated, probably from 1940 to 46, right before uh, North Brothers was bought out by, by um, Stanley Tool. And of course it's chrome plated as stuff would be about that time. This one, however, is nickel-plated. That's 1920s, maybe even earlier. They work. Let's see if I... Yeah, we go. Retractable screwdrivers. And we have the bits in the original carrier. Look at that. There's actually six bits in here. So they combine them into one, probably three for each one. They're just uh, various uh, flat blade screwdriver bits different sizes in the original container little cloth bag you don't see that too often and we have a smaller one it's also North Brothers Yankee and of course a house that old you would expect to find these little egg beater drills the good old Pratt company is that good old Pratt yes that is good old Pratt really nice handle on there that's clean and this will clean up nice that'll be cleaned up very nice you can still use these, by the way. They're not just wall displays. They can actually be used. This one, uh, let's see, Miller's Falls. This is the Miller's Falls. And does that have the unscrewed top? Yes, it does. And look at the top's condition, it's really nice. That handle's beautiful. No idea what this is, it's some kind of an igniter. You have to lock the top before, what does that say? When filling, you fill it with something. Lighter fluid, maybe? And the top. Well, let's see if I can get that off. It doesn't want to come off. Oh, yes, it did. Yeah. Some kind of igniter, for what I don't really know. Just one of the many little oddball things that end up in my bag when I dump whole drawers in there. A Paul Wood circle cutter with the instructions still there in the box, missing the top, but that's okay. It's all right. Like I said, this is not big money stuff. And, you know, at least I found one pair of vice grips. But that's old one, isn't it? Little pair of vice grips. Real USA vice grips. Teeth are still good. Perfectly usable tool. I'm assuming this is for punching holes in uh, oil cans, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. I haven't really researched this yet or not. It looks familiar. I've seen it before. There is no name on it, unfortunately. It's no name, but... It's in nice shape. A lot of these little tack removers and stuff like that. This good old Pratt device here is somehow used for installing door hinges and door hardware. Not really sure how that works. You know, you know, it's a measuring device, obviously, because it is good old Pratt. But it's a measuring device it needs to be cleaned up. But uh, that was 
amongst all of the many little oddball things that were turning up on this sale. Anybody need some ancient Chinese money? Found a bunch of that. Now this. This is the kind of thing that that kind of pick is really good for. Mobile company. It's a window sprayer. This is for my Model A Ford or some similar era car from the, the 1920s and early 30s. You fill it with Windex or some other cleaner and squirt, 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 squirt. And then you wipe down your window. Look at the condition. It's nickel plated. It's brass. And that'll clean up very nicely. That'll polish right up. I doubt this has really ever been used for its intended purpose. It was just, again, sitting in a drawer. Long drill bit. Now this is nice. This is also North Brothers Yankee. Uh, it is... A 1545. 1545, big head beater. They call this uh, the shoulder model. You can kind of put it handling the shoulder, lean on it, extra handle there, and put some extra pressure on it to drill. Uh, they have an attachment that, that's like a, a cup over here. You can put it against your chest and do it. This is multi-speed. I believe it's five different speeds in there that you can switch back and forth for more torque if needed. That's going to clean up nicely. It's already pretty clean. This was actually in a custom-made cabinet that the owner had made for it, along with this, uh, this Stanley brace over here. And uh, unfortunately, the cabinet was attached to the workbench, which was attached to the house. National Historic Register, you can't take these houses apart, so I had to leave the cabinet behind. It would have been large and awkward, and it was made to hold some saws too, which I don't have, so somebody else got those. But look at that, North Brothers Yankee. That's pre-1946. I'm guessing this is 1930s or early 40s. It could even be older. This brace is Stanley. Look at the nickel plating on there. Or well, maybe that's chrome plating by this point. It's a 10 inch brace, really nice condition. Had a custom slot in the cabinet, was right next to that. Still has the, the, uh, the decal on the handle. Obviously did not get used very much. And there's all kinds of brace bits with this. We have all of these brace bits with it. They need to be cleaned up because some of them were in the cabinet and some of them were on the bench. And this tool room had not been used in probably 50 or 60 years. And, you know, you leave things that long, even in a very dry basement, they're going to get rusty eventually. But that'll clean up with a vapor rust. You know, we'll dip them in the bath, let them sit there. We'll clean them up nice. We had some tap and dies. It's not really a set, it's just an accumulation, but still they're nice, they're USA made, and they're clean. They'll clean up nicely. Paintbrush, I see a new paintbrush, I grab it. That's a vintage paintbrush, very good quality, and they are expensive. Cool, ceramic door handle, doorknob. A friend of mine got another that was a set. This is just an oddball extra that was lying around. Didn't match anything in the house, so I don't know where it came from. Just an extra, I guess. Here we have some Heller New Cuts. This is a file set. Let me open that up so you can see. Heller New Cut Files. Nice condition. It doesn't look used. Again, a lot of these tools will, will like that. Some, some of the woodworking tools had obvious wear on them, and some just didn't. Like nothing. Here is an Ullman Master Angle Inspection Device. What does that mean? I'll show you if I can get it out of the package. Just give me a second here. It's a mirror for looking at hard to reach things. You know, it opens up and you can look at stuff. It needs to be cleaned, obviously, but so that's cool. And in the original box too, I should call this the House of Smalls because there were a lot of small, interesting items in it you know upstairs is all the fancy furniture and stuff like that i don't care about that stuff i'm in the basement picking that that's my area the basement the garage you know utility closets that's where i go for stuff over here we have what looks like some turn of the century thumbtacks little what do you call it little uh containers the original containers for them that's a dupont number seven spray gun look at that not really sure how that works, but I'll figure it out. I think, yeah, the instructions are actually in the bottle. The hose is petrified, but uh, that could be replaced. I'll figure it out. All righty. Okay, now that. 
That is a tire inflator slash fire extinguisher for an early automobile. Yeah, it's probably CO2 in there or something like that. So you can use it to inflate a flat tire or to put out a fire. <laughs> Complete with the original wooden box, the hose, and somewhere in there are the instructions too. And then we have a Kennedy toolbox, an old early Kennedy toolbox. Kind of matches the truck, doesn't it? It's got the original tray. Now this box was actually not being used for tools. It was full of artists, paintbrushes and paints. So it's a really, it's not all beat to hell like you usually find. I wish the key was with it, but still it's not bad. You know, usually these things are all beat up and, you know, kind of rough looking because they've been used with heavy tools in them on, on work jobs. This was used by an artist to hold paints, all of which were dried out. I dumped out the paints, took the box. We have some old style wire brushes. Always use those. Here's a wooden mallet. Nice one. Is that real? Is that? No, that's wood. That's wood. An Empire Trouble Light, or Work Light, if you choose. It's 6 volts. I have batteries on order for this. They're coming. It's not corroded inside. It looks to be in good shape. I have to clean up the lens and fix that gasket. But uh, this would prob will probably work just fine. Really cool. See that. You set it like that and point it at your work, and, and you're good to go. Good old enamelware teapot. I have to clean some lime scale out of it, but it's in good shape. Not all banged up, it's not even really chipped. One little chip at the, at the spout there, a tiny one, that's it. Those are nice, I'm guessing this one's about 1920s. Some real solder, that's actual lit solder on top of a little child's lock box for like queens and stuff. There's nothing in it now, it's just an empty box. That is probably from the original Dremel tool, Dremel accessories. Some little hacksaws there, one of which is actually Vintage Craftsman. And we have a one gallon US standard pour spout, uh, pour can container with a little spout on it. And it doesn't look like it's ever been used. There's no residue inside. You know, there's some little stuff I got down in there, but it's in really nice shape. I have smaller versions of that. That's the biggest one I've so far found at an estate sale, which I grabbed immediately. There's that light, that long extension light there. This house had a dark room in the basement. Looked 40s era, big and larger in there, and, and a lot of early photography stuff, which really isn't for me. I don't, I don't deal with that, but I did like the light. And I clicked it on. It was still plugged in and hooked up to a shelf. I clicked it. It went on and off just fine. I said, huh, I could use that. I went to pull the plug out, and you know, when I take plugs out, I do it the proper way. I grasp it here. I don't tug, boom, like that. And this probably saved my ass this time because I pulled the plug out, and while I was doing that, the entire cord crumbled to pieces, leaving nothing but the bare wire. Had I grabbed it like this, I would have gotten a nice shock when it crumbled in my hand. Uh, obviously, I have since replaced the wire. That's new wire in there now. Uh, the old one was, like I said, terminal. <laughs> so I might have been too, if I'd have been stupid enough to pull a cord like that. That's why you never pull cords, people. Grasp it by the plug and pull the plug. This is an interval timer from that same dark room. Needs cleaning up, needs oiling. It probably still works. The bell still works. <laughs> Just something I threw in there because it was, it was there. I said, okay, you know, why not? It's interesting. I'll play with that later. Um, is there anything I haven't covered here now? We have pretty much all the... Oh, yeah. Bunch of little screwdrivers. Oh, this. I forgot this. This is a Williams. Yes. The Williams Company. This is uh, a multi-socket, they called it. You see, it's got all the sockets on it. It looks like it's never been used. No wear on the sockets. Everything is still tight. Really nice shape. And again just sitting there in a drawer like that somebody had gotten it for a gift maybe or something and never use it and put it away various little punches and cutters and knives and stuff like that all bought because they had nice wood handles you know i will do something with those we got a file we have 
miscellaneous screwdrivers, which you usually find. Look at it. Look at the handle on that one. That's nice. Well, which one was this? This was uh, fit tight. I think this is fit tight. Jif tight. It is Jif tight. I cannot read the name of the company because it's a little rusty on the ferrule there, but it's a nice looking screwdriver. Really like the handle on that. It's not chipped or anything. Probably was only used once or never and put away. Little which somebody must have gotten the wood chisels before I got there. I know this house would have had them. Uh, a, a, a shop like that definitely would have had hundreds of wood chisels. That's okay. I already have hundreds of wood chisels. This is just a little one that was floating around. Look cool. Needs to be sharpened. That's okay. Little ones like that sometimes a little hard to come by. So maybe they thought it was a screwdriver and missed it. Again, look at all the clamps. From the tiny to the big. There were some big bar clamps there, but I left those for someone who will actually use them. I already have bar clamps, and they take up a lot of real estate. And they're kind of heavy, and getting in and out of this basement was not easy. <laughs> not easy at all. Didn't help that this house had no central AC. You know, because, again, historic register, you can't really chop these houses up to put modern central air conditioning in them. There's a way to get around that, but uh, it involves special duct work and everything. That hadn't been done. Some little old lady lived in this house. Her family had lived there since they built the place in 1904. Uh, belonged to a relative of the uh, Otis Elevator family. Otis Elevator inventor. And upstairs, they were selling Turkish carpets and fancy dining room tables. All kinds of cut crystal and silverware and pewterware and... Eh, millions of books, even a lot of phonograph records, but it really wasn't stuff that appealed to me, so I left that. You know, and uh, you know, just stuff like that. What did I buy upstairs? Somewhere, somewhere I have a camera. I, oh, wait, this is some stuff I forgot to put out. Give me a second here. I will go and get that. Not that it's much to see, but... There we go. Oh, let's see, I forgot a few things. I forgot a few things. So much stuff in this one. I haven't, it was days ago, but the weather's been really nasty, humid, raining sometimes. And we have the Canadian wildfires to deal with that are complicating the hell out of everything. All the smoke down here is choking us out. Oh my goodness. Today's gonna be another day. I woke up this morning and the sun was an angry red ball in the sky. Just that haze. I feel sorry for anybody who's up in Canada. If it's bad here, I can't imagine what it's like there. Uh, I have to put the camera down again because I forgot to take the camera, the other camera, out of its container here. Okay. And let's hit the button. This is a Kodak. I don't know the model. I just grabbed it because it kind of looked cool. It's obviously 40s, maybe 30s. The bellows are stock. I have to work on teasing that open very carefully. It's already starting to come apart a little bit. But just look cool, and it really was basically for nothing almost. Little simple cameras is what they used back then. It has its original case. So I figure, why not? It's a historic home. Everything in it should have actually been kept with the home. But I guess for some reason, if you uh, aren't owned by the Park Service, everything in the house could be sold. Just not the house itself can't be altered. We have some antique... Uh, bottles and jars here car skin tempered wax really nice shade i'm gonna the oldest can of spray paint imaginable still full chrome king paint sprayer and this is the type you need to get the sprayer for <laughs> maybe it's for that maybe i don't know it was so clean i had to have it what is that 1960s 50s somewhere around in there i'm not an expert on collectible cans and bottles Fritzall, this is for ca uh, my castor oil products. Yikes. All internal combustion engines restores power in a sluggish engine with one application, no harmful or volatile dopes. Dopes, that's vapors. The castor oil with the gum removed. Man. I remember hearing a story about castor oil was used in aircraft engines, a full loss system. We're talking in the very early days where the pilot would be sitting behind the engine and it would be splattering him in the face with castor oil. And castor oil, for those of you who don't know, is a purgative. So by the time the pilot was back on the ground, the obvious was happening to his internal organs, his intestines. He was, yeah, he needed to have a bowel movement in a very, very, very urgent way. Oh, I forgot. Oh, it was also kind of used 
by parents in the old days, you know, to, to purge their children's systems. Yeah, give your kid a good shot of castor oil and then clear the way to the John. This is a little light you can get into tight spots with, and it's flexible. Uh, again, 1950s or 40s, and again, apparently unused. There's no batteries, no corrosion, in very good shape. Okay, what didn't I cover? Oh, duh. Yeah, the soldering iron. This is old, very old, beautiful wooden handle on there. Somehow the cord is still in good shape, but I would not trust that. <laughs> Let's plug it in. Uh, I'm sure it still works. No reason why it wouldn't. Who made this? Uh, let me see if I can read that. The Electric Heater Corporation of New York. Electric Heater Corporation of New York. Vulcan. It's the Vulcan. That came with the soldering. The solder over there. Obviously, these are actually not marked that I've been able to find. Maybe when I clean them up, but that has to be channel lock. I mean, it has to be. It just looks too close and the quality is the same as channel lock and the age of this house, I'm guessing sometime around 1960 or sometime in the 60s anyway, it has to be channel lock, maybe made for a department store or something like that. But we'll be looking into that later. I will compare it to my actual ch marked channel locks and we'll see if it's a knockoff or if it's something, you know, there's a brace bit that's adjustable. Needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but that's nothing. That'll clean right up. Comes in its own little carry, can carry what you call it there. Uh, oh, little tack, you know, plastic mallet. That was actually upstairs in one of the closets. Okay, I think, uh, I think that covers everything from this particular estate sale. Ah, this is an EverReady flashlight. Old one. What, 60s? 50s? Probably 50s. Ever ready, Captain. It's a sea cell light. And again, brand new. Brand new. It's never been used. I love picks like this. I wish they were all like that. But not too many historic homes come on the market with their original contents. That's the key. Plenty of homes have been sold a dozen times since 1904. Every family taking their stuff with them when they left. And what you get is whatever the last family had. This one... They'd been there since 1904, and everything was up for grabs. Oh, I'm, I'm lucky I was able to get what I got, because there were a lot of other hands grabbing in there, let me tell you. There were plenty of people crowding in there. And uh, I was, at, some, at one point, just grabbing stuff and shoving it into my bag without even looking at it. You know, that's how I ended up with this, and this, and this, you know, just by whoop, right in the bag, right in the bag. It was just whatever my hand touched. I'll figure it out later. I knew I wasn't going to be paying more than 100 bucks. You know, I think the whole day cost me 160 bucks. That's with lunch. So this alone, that's 50 bucks on eBay. Uh, these are about $40 each, give or take. This, that's over 100 This, 50 60 bucks. maybe. I'm not really sure. Didn't price it. You know, it just there's so many small items. This. This, I've never seen one this clean, functional. You know, a lot of the ones I see on eBay are sold as is, whatever that means. They're all heavily tarnished and dented and dinged because people who bought lighters actually use them. This guy didn't. So I'm going to guess 200 bucks on that. I'm, I'm guessing there, but I'm not selling it. I'm not selling any of this stuff, but 200 bucks. So for 160 with lunch, I end up with what? Seven, six, seven hundred dollars worth of stuff. If I was to buy them individually, especially that toolbox over there, that toolbox, I would price that at $50. It's just really nice. It's a really nice size. It's in nice condition. It's vintage. But there you go. That was my day in a nutshell. Except what did I see other than that? Let's see, there was a drill press, bandsaw, several big assembly tables, uh, grinder, which I probably should have taken, but it weighed a ton. And frankly, I have five or six grinders. Uh, there were some broken power tools from the 50s in there, all corroded and broken up and not in very good shape. And some stuff that uh, had probably disappeared before I got there. You know, people were there before me and they, and they had grabbed a lot of stuff. Okay. There's our look. 
at uh, last Thursday's Estate Sale Hall. This was the Charles E. Otis House in Yonkers, New York, built in 1904.